going on, YouTube fam? <clears throat> I figured I'd hop on here and, and do this live today. So I want to answer a couple questions. I know it's not the normal time. So um, if you're brand new to this channel, do me a huge solid and subscribe and click the bell to be notified. So when I do these from time to time, you know exactly what it is uh, and you won't miss out. So I wanted to hop on here and to do this and to just share with you guys. So um, if you got some questions, um, guitar related, whatever, let me know and I can definitely answer them because that's what I'm doing today. I'm answering questions specifically guitar related. Um, it could be about the industry. It could be about a whole bunch of stuff. So that's what I'm doing today. So by all means, if you had a question, um, uh, shoot. What's up, Mark? What's going on, everybody? If somebody else just says so, what's up. Uh, what's good? What's good? How you guys doing? Uh, from London. That's what's up, man. Good job. Good job. So yeah, if you got any questions, um, uh, guitar related or whatever um, I'm taking this opportunity now to just answer questions so uh, I know it's a little bit later in the day than I normally would do it but that's one of the benefits of you like wanting to um, click the bell to subscribe to this channel to click the bell to be notified so just whenever I'm on you know we can, I can answer questions so shoot away if you guys got questions or whatever this is a prime opportunity um, while I'm on here answering questions so you guys could ask whatever you want so I'm listening what's up Seems you're not with your guitar. No, I don't have my guitar today. Um, it's actually in the corner, but I'm not in my, my normal place, so. Um, can I do a guitar? What does it say? My other job, both for a living. Um, you could definitely do guitar for a living, but you have to just be strategic about how you go about it. I don't know what you're, what you're aspiring to do. Like if you're aspiring to play for artists, if you're aspiring to do session work, you just have to plan. Um, and you have to be very um, business oriented whenever you're doing this stuff because, again, you have to treat this like a business. Even though I love to play, but I still have to treat this like a business. If I don't treat it like a business, then it's not going to be lucrative. I'm thinking of getting a, a shirt M7B mic. Sweet. How often do you recommend you change strings on electric guitar? It really depends on how much how often you play. If you play a lot aggressively, then you probably want to change your strings often. If you don't, you may have a little bit more leniency. And then also if you keep your guitars in a case or if you don't keep them in a case, that would also determine um, because the oxygen can help, you know, make your strings oxidize. You get like rust on your strings and like different kind of corrosion stuff on your strings. So you just want to be familiar with that um, when you're going through and deciding if you need to change your strings or not. Uh, what guitar do you recommend? Are you familiar with the uh, Aria Pro? I've never, I've never played those. So I'm not really familiar with those. Um, I'm just starting out. Um, with an acoustic playing for instance there's no equipment but i i want to grow and possibly monetize any tips consistency if you want to like monetize and, and grow in your craft you definitely want to be consistent in your practice and your rehearsal that's how you're going to get um, people to want to start paying for your stuff and then also you want to start promoting yourself with social media marketing instagram is free uh, you can pay for ads if you need to but like using instagram using youtube using facebook start to pay for ads if you want to to start to promote what exactly what you're doing but you want to work on your craft um, which you expect the workbooks mark honestly if you um, people have already started to get their workbooks so the, the company the print press has your your information unless you got a signed copy if you have a signed copy then I'm gonna start signing copies and mailing stuff out this week uh, thank you for doing what you do man really inspiring man I appreciate that is that a good investment uh, for a recording I've heard um, it works for almost everyday musicians miles if, it, if that's what the, the consensus is then yeah by all means uh, do you have an R&B book uh, with progressions. So the R&B workbook that I have is specifically that a workbook. I don't have a book um, with R&B progressions. If you want to learn about R&B progressions, then I highly suggest that you become a camper. Um, that's where I talk about all my progressions at or majority of my progressions. Can you talk about uh, improving rhythm and staying locked into the beat um, while playing without a band? So yeah, you want to start practicing with the metronome. That's the, the key that I talk about, you know, working on your timing and your rhythm is you have to practice with a metronome. Practicing with a metronome helps you your internal clock. It's just like your heartbeat. If your heartbeat is irregular, then you're gonna be all over the place. You're not gonna be able to function. Same thing when you're playing. You gotta make sure that you're you're locking in. And that's one of the things that playing with a metronome can do for you. Uh, what type of game pedals do you recommend? Like tube screamers, blues, breakers? Uh, if I, we're gonna talk about game pedal. I like the Keeley d &M. That's probably one of my favorite pedals. Um, and exotic pedals makes a lot of really good stuff too. So check out exotic pedals. Uh, <clears throat> good deal. All right, those are some really good questions. Questions, is diminished always 
uh, the resolve. No, it's not always the resolve. The diminish is not always the resolve. For me, the diminish is like a passing chord. So I use the diminish to kind of move around from one spot to the next spot. I don't use it as a passing chord. Um, how difficult is it to travel with an amp on a plane? I never travel with an amp on a plane. I usually get backline for companies. So whenever I'm getting to go do performance, they usually ask where my backline is. And my backline, nine times out of 10, is always an amp. I may go on to get like little small nuanced things that I don't want to travel with, but I never travel with an amp. Um, how do songwriters get their songs heard by artists f to records? Number one, I would say find who their um, who their management is. Like sending a song, submitting a song to the management. You don't want to do like one song. You, I've heard that it's better if you do batches of songs, so that way you can pick and choose because you never know how an artist is feeling at that particular time. So finding their management or finding the artist and let them know that listen, I, I got a song I want to submit. Just committing, like um, commenting either or just DMing them. Uh, this social media allows you to connect with a lot of people, so you never know. You know how social media can work. Doesn't matter what amp I use. For recording, um, I have a Vox. Your know, amps do definitely do matter because tones, everything's about tones. So you, you want to be mindful of what kind of amp you use, depending on what kind of record that you're playing. For me, um, I'm not necessarily kind of recording with a Vox because Vox are like kind of bright and glassy. So I don't want to use that for R&B tone. Um, maybe if I'm doing a pop record or something like that. But you just you got to be mindful of all these things. That, it's a science with all this stuff, you know, ensuring that you got the right kind of amp, ensuring that you got the right kind of... Uh, pedals, the right kind of sound all over, all around. You just want to be mindful to make, to ensure that you're using the right kind of stuff. Amp versus profiler. I typically would go with a profiler because you have more options. Amp, you only have one sound and that's all you can do. Profiler, you can get multiple sounds, i.e. like a Kemper. Um, one of my main things that I do when I'm recording is I use a Kemper because it allows me to get a, a myriad of sounds. Like I can go from hard rock or I could go to like a classic kind of bluesy sound or I could go to like a pop sound or an R&B sound. So profilers are, are typically a lot better in that sense. Um, Yo, Carrie, if you're starting to play out again, um, which I know is you're doing, hold on, what is this? I hope you can give us campers a heads up. Thanks for your time, bro. Oh, for sure, Mark. I'll definitely let you know, like, you know, when I'm playing. That's typically what I'm doing. I also dropped that I'm doing a clinic uh, December 4th in Bakersfield, uh, California. So if the campers, is art, it's already been dropped in there. All the information has been dropped in there. So if you want to travel to Bakersfield or you're close to Bakersfield, California, I'm going to be doing a 45-minute performance. I'm also going to be teaching. Um, so it's, that's one of my main performances that's coming up really soon. Uh, would you sell all your amps? and just rock with a profiler. I would never sell all my amps, it's just never me. Um, profilers for me are basically for studio sessions. I love my Bad Cat Lynx 50. And if I can't get that, then it's like um, a Mesa Boogie Lone Star. And then I like the um, Fender DeVille. So I would never sell my amps. Um, what's the learning curve on your Helix like for life? So I would say the learning curve can be steep if you don't have the right kind of people showing you how to use it. So I had a lot of people that showed me how to use it because for me, I'm not the tech savvy guy that plays. I know exactly the sounds that I want, <clears throat> but as far as the tech savviness, that's not who I am. So I had a lot of guys walk me through. Now, once they walk me through and they show me how to use it, then I was just like, I'm good to go. Um, so we've got a few more questions. I'm trying to get it out to there to Bakersfield. Come on, Cam, let's go, bro, let's go. <laughs> uh, simple electric setup for somebody um, with a lot of years playing instruments that can get overwhelmed um, by the knobs and the buttons and typical the switches, et cetera, on electric guitar, pedal boards, and amps. Oh, it can definitely be overwhelming. That's why I say a lot of times I tell people to find a guitar that makes you feel comfortable or find an amp that makes you feel comfortable. So the Mesa Boogie can be overwhelming because there's a lot of knobs. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like Bad Cat, the Lynx 50, because it's just, you're turning the tone knob. It's just like you, you get to go through a whole bunch of different dials versus trying to dial it in and switch it in. So it can be overwhelming. Same with the guitar, like jazz masters can be overwhelming because there's a lot of buttons and a lot of flips and a lot of switches. Um, but find what makes you comfortable and then like stay with that. The consistency comes from your hand, the tone comes from your hand. Um, but find an instrument that's gonna allow you and a piece of equipment that's gonna allow you to like play consistently, that way you don't have to overthink it. How many guitars do you usually bring with you on tour? Uh, whatever's needed for the gig. So let's say I have to play acoustic, then I would typically bring three guitars. I would bring my A guitar, which is my main guitar, a backup guitar, and then the acoustic. Uh, thanks, bro. You're the best in the game at answering questions and teaching, man. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Uh, what's your process like uh, for making a song? It depends. The process is always different, Xavier. So it depends if I'm with a singer, songwriter, my process might be different. Versus if it's just me and I hear a melody in my head and I just want to play something that's like, oh, I think it's really cool. 
I'll get with a, another producer. Sometimes we may co-produce or I'll just produce it myself. It just really depends. A lot of times I start out with guitar. Um, I'll start out with just playing the melody so I can get the line. And then once I get the melody, I want to get the chords that coincide with those those melodies. And then I may pull back the melody so that way I can be like, if I have a singer, I'll be like, yo, this is what I want you to sing. I want you to play this, but I don't want to double up with the singer singing. It's kind of like an example of leading them. Um, and, you know, the flow of how I want the cadence to go. So that way when I'm, I'm producing the record, they know exactly what it is. Like one liners, uh, you know, or top liners. That's what I, I normally do when I'm, I'm writing especially with like my guitar, trying to give them like a, a little kind of a guide to let them know how to do it. Uh, which is your most versatile guitar, if you could take one out? My um, Raven Classic is my most versatile guitar. It sounds like a lot of different guitars. It's very lightweight. It's very, uh, it could do a lot of amazing things. And so that's usually why I take that guitar on most gigs. Uh, do you ever play a, a back rap? Um, and just pretend like you're on stage. No, I haven't. Uh, actually, no, I take it back. I, I when I used to um, sub for my friend that was on a Derulo gig um, a few years back. He, I would do that. So he had like some background. I would do, definitely do that. But I didn't really like it because I'm, I'm a, I like having the the amp on stage and feeling what it feels like when I'm playing. So that's typically what I like to go for. It's having the amp on stage. Uh, camper. Um, here from Justin North Carolina. How do you think the new idea, the new idea when composing guitar parts for either yourself or artists, how do you think of new ideas? Uh, typically, I'm inspired by all types of stuff. I mean, something that I heard like, on Netflix, something that I heard on Spotify, whatever. I, I typically can take whatever. Or if I'm talking to the singer, songwriter, or the artist and just seeing where they are. Like if they're going through a relationship breakup or they're happy or they're sad about something, I typically try to find uh, different melodies that will help, you know, facilitate that story and make it things sound a whole lot better. Um, HSS Strat or SS, HSS all day, hands down. I need to have that humbucker in the bridge because I want to definitely melt paint off the walls when I have to solo. That's my setup. My improv is very weak. Um, what would you suggest... I've been playing for 10 years. So Joe, if you've been playing for 10 years, I highly suggest you come to Carrie's camp because I have lessons galore that help out with improv skills. So go to Happy Camper. I'm sorry, not Happy Camper. Go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S, K-A-M-P.com and become a camper. I promise you, we got the stuff that's gonna get you the sauce that you're looking for so the way that you don't feel like you're stagnant and you're stuck playing the same stuff all over and over. Warren, what's good, man? Um, have you ever played a PRS CE guitar? Yes, I had a black one that I used to play all the time. Um, I necessarily did not like it because I didn't like the pickups. It wasn't because of the guitar. I just like the pickups. But that this was like, man, well over 10, 15 years ago. But I didn't understand how you could pick out, you could switch out pickups. So I sold the guitar not knowing that like all I needed to do was just change out the pickups. So stuff like that will help a guitar. If you like the way the guitar feels, but you don't necessarily like how it sounds, change out the pickups. I have fatter fingers, uh, majorly um, middle ones. Any thoughts on this and how I, um, can people like this get over that? So if you have fatter fingers, find a guitar that, that complements that. Sometimes a Les Paul definitely can complement that. Um, there are certain strats that can definitely complement that because they have jumbo frat, frets and everything. So there's a whole lot of different options. You're not stuck with just playing like small neck guitars anymore. Um, I just put a humbucker in my strat bridge and I don't feel FOMO anymore. It's so dope. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate it. That's what's up. Um, how does someone avoid holding uh, their breath while playing? You got to practice, Tony. Like, it's just like, you know, you got to practice breathing because it's important. If you hold your breath while you're playing, you're going to pass out. So you got to make sure that you're breathing. So practice while you're playing, like in your own. I think a lot of it probably stems from anxiety that you may have when you're playing out in front of people. So just practice doing that in your house, like set a mirror up so you're looking at yourself playing so you get used to what that feels like, somebody looking back at you. And then when you get used to like, okay, I, I gotta breathe through it, tell yourself like, yo, breathe, 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 breathe. And then when you go out there and you execute. Uh, what mic do you use on your amp? I don't I don't mic my amps, I, cause I use the Helix, so I go directly line out. So I have like two XLR outs on the front, so I never mic my amp. Which guitar cables do you recommend? I recommend Merino cables. Find them on Instagram, Merino cables. That's the only cables that I use. Hey, I just signed up. That's what's up, that's what's up. Welcome to the fam.
These are some really good questions. My soloing is very, very weak. What should I, what would I do? So Joe, again, I, you're a prime candidate for Carrie's Camp because we have lessons that talk about how to solo. Um, go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S, K-A-M-P.com. And I'm telling you, man, you're going to be, if you apply the principles that we're teaching in Carrie's Camp, man, you're going to start to see so much success in your playing. I kind of give a little bit of snippets. I've already done a couple solo videos here on, on um, Instagram. I'm sorry, on YouTube. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But in Carrie's Camp, we go way more in depth and I really break it down and I show you specifically how to lock in and get those ton of tones that you're looking for. What's your process in learning songs for an upcoming tour? Um, normally, I listen to the whole set list and then depending on how many songs it is, I break it down by learning so many songs before I get to rehearsal. So let's just say I've got like 10 songs I need to learn um, and I get the stuff on, let's say a Sunday, but rehearsals start on a Wednesday, then I'm going to break it down. Like I may do three songs a day. Um, and then like, you know, saying three songs on Monday, three songs on uh, Tuesday, three songs on Wednesday. That way I kind of have a good grasp of what it is. And I want to make notes, like I write out notes. So I know like, okay, cool. This song requires me to play acoustic. It starts in the key of whatever. The progression is such and such, such and such. It gives myself like kind of a, a guide to know exactly how to do whatever. And then when I get to rehearsal, I want to record the rehearsal. So I make sure I can listen to all the mistakes. It's not about making sure I get the songs right. So all my mistakes, when I look back and be like, oh, that lick was supposed to go right here. So that way I know exactly what I need to do whenever I'm getting ready for the tour. And I want to make sure I'm a quick study. When people are taking breaks and kind of chilling or whatever, if I need to go back and work through the stuff, I'm going to work through the stuff and make sure I get it. What up, man? Uh, you know LT, LTD, Les Paul? Right, is it good for R&B? I've never played it, so I can't really give you any insight. But if it works, man, it works. Um, when amps do you recommend? What amps do you recommend for live? Um, and which ones do you recommend for studio? So the amps that I recommend for live again is a Mesa Boogie Link uh, 50. I'm sorry, Mesa Boogie Long Star Bad Cat Lynx 50 or a Fender Deville. Matchlets are really good uh, for studio sessions. I don't really record myself. Um, I always bring my Helix for the most part. I go direct, so I, I don't I don't know which um, amps to do for live. Um, do, 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 do. Is your program for beginners? Yes, my program is for Jasmine. My program is for beginners. It's for intermediates and it's also for advanced. So whatever level that you are, we cover all bases. If you've never seen a guitar before, but you want to learn how to play, we got you. Okay. Um, can you please do a video? Can you please do a video on the song? You don't have to be a star by baby. I'll add it to the list. I got a lot of things, but I'll add it to the list. Hey, Carrie, I started um, learning guitar two months ago. I'm trying to learn some smooth progressions all across the fretboard. How do you recommend learning these chords? Um, I suggest that you become a camper so I can show you specifically how to do that. So go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S, K-A-M-P.com, and I'm gonna get you laced up, I'm gonna get you nice. So no way you can do that. Uh, do, 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 do. Notice you're playing uh, Quilter now. I've been playing Quilter for years. I've been a Quilter artist for years. I didn't just start playing Quilter. Uh, I think when I did the Legacy Tour, maybe four or five years ago, six. I can't remember how long ago it was, but I started, that's when I started using Quilter. Um, have you ever used the Avid 11 rack system? I've never used it. Um, you ever record on tape? I've never recorded on tape either. I've never had that opportunity to be in a studio to record on tape. Who is your favorite female guitar player? Um, and is her name Jennifer Bliss? Exactly, Jennifer. Jennifer is my favorite all-time, hands-down guitarist. <laughs> What's going on, Jennifer? How you doing? I got my R&B workbook and I'm super impressed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That means a whole lot. Um, your favorite tone pedal? My favorite tone pedal? I don't know what my favorite would be. I mean, I love I love a good overdrive pedal just because, you know, as a guitar player, we always want to rock out, but there's nothing like a good delay pedal or a good reverb pedal, you know what I mean? Uh, what are your go-to Kemper profiles? Honestly, I'm not in front of my, in my studio. I have them all written down on the wall because I have, I think on, I think I have, I'm trying to like visually look right now. I think I have probably like 15 or 20 go-to profiles for like clean sounds, overdrive sounds. Like, so when I get back to my studio, I may take a picture and just throw them up there real quick. Carrie, how do you Im improve uh, my dynamic fingers while holding a chord? Um, so, Mark, if you haven't become a camper, I highly suggest you become a camper because we've got courses that are going to definitely help you 
really know how to do that. So go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S, K-A-M-P.com. Would you recommend learning piano and guitar simultaneously? I would say no. The reason why I say because a lot of times you're oversaturating yourself with trying to learn two concepts is going to be difficult, you know. So learn one and then progress to the other. Single coil or humbuckers, which one do you prefer? It beats it all depends on the type of guitar that I have to play and why do I need to have that guitar. It really, it depends on what. So Mark, go to carriescamp.com. That is K-E-R-R-Y. K-A-M-P.com. K-E-R-R-Y-S, K-A-M-P.com. Do you use virtual amps? No, uh, I, I don't. Um, not consistently. Not not when I'm playing out live. Maybe in the studio occasionally, but not when I'm playing out live. Um, mm, mm, mm. Do you ever get frightened in front of people? No. Um, have you ever played uh, Justin Lee Schultz or Chris Baker? No, I haven't. Uh, watching you, bro. Your hammer-ons are strong. How do you develop good hammer-ons like the ones that you have? Um, it's practicing. That's really how you develop it. you got to practice that muscle. It's just like shooting a jump shot. If you don't practice shooting a jump shot, then you, you, you'll you never be really good at it. So it's practice it in consistency. Um, yeah, that was a mistake. Okay. Uh, do you ever have issues with the sound guy messing up your sound? Oh, plenty of times. A lot of times when you go to these different venues and you have a sound guy that's there, you don't travel with your sound guy, you're possibly going to get that. So I've learned to try to be as nice as possible to the sound guy so that way they won't mess your sound up. But some things are just inevitable because there are other people that's in the band that can have an attitude with the sound guy. He just be like, he'll sabotage everything. It just happens. I hate using a pick. Do I have to use one? No, use whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, would you recommend learning piano? I already answered that question. Uh, what brand or model uh, do you recommend for a synth? I don't, I mean, maybe something by, uh, what's the, what's the, TC Electronics could do something really cool. Um, or you can get the, uh, what's that one pedal? The M9, the H9 pedal. I think that's what it's called. Um, I forget the brand, but yeah, they have a whole bunch of different sounds for synths and stuff like that. <laughs> Best food for a guitarist. Anything that you feel is going to give you the energy to play what you need to play. I mean, you want to be healthy, so you don't want to eat all types of crazy stuff, but, you know, whatever's going to make you keep you healthy and consistent. Uh, what inner monitors are you using uh, to play live? So I'm currently endorsed with Empire Ears. Um, I use them. I've used JH Audio. What else have I used? I've used, like, the, the ones from Guitar Center. I've had all different types of brand. I've, I also have Me Audio. Um... And I think I had some Fender in-ear monitors. But for all live playing that I, I normally use my um, Empire ears. Love your channel. Uh, you play, your play is really awesome, man. Thanks. Appreciate it, dude. What is your outtake on mini guitar systems? I've never played any mini guitar systems, but I think they're really cool. I think they could be unique if you use them in the right, you know, capacity. I think everything can be cool, you know, if you use it in the right capacity. Um, how do you approach emulating other instruments when arranging, um, for example, trumpets or a piano song. So guitar and trumpet are kind of similar because they're like, they're a melodic instrument in the sense of how they approach. So like a lot of times I'll play, this is a, this is a trumpet line. Da, 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 da. I can play it on guitar so that I can show a horn player this is what I'm looking for. Okay. How much of the other instruments uh, tonality do you try to bring over to guitar? I mean, I, as a guitar player, I try to bring over as much as possible because I want to make my playing as full as possible. So it's, it's you know, I'm influenced by a lot of that stuff. Um, how can an experienced guitar player get started with teaching online? Oh, man, you're going to have to come up with a plan because just teaching online is, is not super simple. It's not as easy as you think. So because you have experience, you think that a lot of times when you're teaching concepts, we um, we talk over the heads of the consumer, so you want to be you know mindful of, of ensuring that you're able to connect with people, um, and then you just want to be consistent in how you share the information. Have you uh, have thoughts about doing a digital version of the R&B book? It's something that we've talked about, um, Jennifer. But right now, I, I think um, with the team and all the stuff that we've had to do. It's in the works. It's just, it's not, it's not something that's at the forefront right now, but it's in the works. Um, I can't see how you play the song. I can't see how you play the song. You don't have the song. 
Oh, I already said I'll add it to the list. Um, what is your favorite guitar plugin and for your DOS? What's my favorite guitar plugin? I don't really use guitar plugins because I play through a pedal already. Um, cool. Now I'm gonna take a few more questions and then um, I'm gonna get ready to go. What wireless system would you suggest? There's a Sennheiser uh, wireless that I use whenever I put it on my back line. And I think that that's probably the best one. I, don't, I can't remember offhand specifically what the, the model number is, but it's, it's made by Sennheiser. Are you, uh, how are you doing through this COVID-19? Man, James, I'm doing incredible, bro. I'm doing incredible, thriving and living my best life. Uh, I'm an old guy. Um, then you do more 70s. I'll try to add it to the list, man. I got a lot of people that are asking for all types of genres for R&B, but I'll try to add it to the list. Have I ever played in Africa? I think so. I would have to go back and look at the, the list and just to make sure. Um, where does Prince rank, where does Prink, Prince rank as your influence in your guitar playing? Where does Prince rank? Honestly, Prince does not, he's not in my top tier. Like I love the stuff that he did, but I'm more of a soulful R&B kind of guy. So like in gospel guys, so the guys who played in that specific genre are more influenced. Now I love Prince's like, Stage presence, like Purple Rain and, and, you know, When Doves Cried. All of those songs were great, but that's not, I wouldn't say that's like in my top influence. I can't think of like where he would rank, you know, in the scheme of everything. Just like Jimi Hendrix doesn't rank really high for me because that's not really my vibe and my style. Uh, we have to enjoy life because it's too short. Definitely. Okay, I'm going to take one more question and then I'm going to get ready to go. Are you on TikTok? Yes, I'm on TikTok. Uh, do you have live guitar lessons in the Atlanta area? I do not do live guitar lessons because my schedule is extremely busy. Um, and it's hard for me to try to manipulate my schedule in the sense of, you know, playing here, session here with my kids and my family. So it's just, you know, you gotta, you gotta do what you can do. So that's why everything for me is all, always online. Man, you guys have a great weekend. I love you guys, man. I love talking guitar, chatting, and answering a couple questions. Listen, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, do me a huge solid. Subscribe to this channel. Click the bell to be notified because I will hop on here from time to time, and it won't always be the same consistent time. We're going to talk about guitars. We'll answer questions about industry stuff. I'll even play guitar and show you guys stuff from time to time. So please do me a huge solid. And also, if you're not a camper, but you've heard me talk about it and you're kind of inquiring like what it is, if you play in church or if you your beginner or your intermediate or advanced, whatever the case may be, Carrie's Camp has something for you. So go check it out. Go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. I look forward to being a camper man. I love you guys. You guys take care. You guys have a great, great weekend. Oh, roll tide.